Welcome back. We got some improved production quality today. I bought another server. No surprise there. This time, it is the shorter 1U relative of the DL380P that I did a video on. It is my, actually my first video. And um, here is the DL360P. It's the 1U variant of that exact server. I just thought since that first video did so well, why not just do a, another casual video taking a look at this awesome server. So. I bought this on eBay and it was the very first server that I purchased on eBay and picked up locally too, which I think is part of the reason that I got such a good deal on this is because they weren't shipping it. And since they weren't shipping it, they sold it for really cheap. And I'm going to go over what I got in this. And I did I've done a little bit of work on it already, so it's some stuff's different, but eh whatever. Um it's an awesome server. No surprise there. The DL380P is awesome. Why isn't the why wouldn't the DL360P be awesome? And it is awesome. <clears throat> and so I guess here's what I got in terms of specs when I purchased it. It had three three terabyte hard drives, two 460 watt power supplies, um, dual E52648L CPUs. Those are eight core, 16 threads each, and they're L low power, so they're 70 watts. Um, it had 64 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz memory, and it is also HP smart memory too. Um, got a quad gigabit network card. Um, it had two gigabytes of cache. I downgraded that, and I'll get to why I did later to 512. But it had two gigabyte cache module in it. I think that's all of the main points there. Um, pr pretty much like the big selling points for me was the uh, memory. It had a pretty good amount of memory. Uh, the CPUs, even though they're not V2s, I actually do quite like them. They are low power, 8 core, 16 thread. Yeah, the hard drives too. The hard drives aren't in this server now. I've got a couple 250 gig ones in there now. Um, the reason I'm not using 3 terabytes is because my plan for this server doesn't need that storage. And also, I really wanted to put those hard drives right into my NetApp disk shelf right when I got the server home because I wanted that extra storage. Um, but let's go take a look at the inside. All right, let's open this up. So probably the first thing you'll notice is that this looks a lot like the DL380P that I already did a video on, and that's because it's the same generation. I mean, <laughs> who would have thought that the same generation of server has some similarities in between models? Um, very similar PCI Express riser. Um, very similar fans, very similar heat sinks, very similar memory arrangement, very I er, identical power supplies. Um, it's very deja vu. We've seen this before. I mean, the couple things that are different is um, these fans aren't quite as nice as the DL380P. That was one of my favorite things about the DL380P was the fans. Um, these don't like latch in quite as well. The only thing that's holding them in place is the fan connector on there. Um, because other than that, they just kind of flop around in there. But it's not bad at all. They're still hot swap. They're, just, they're not as quite as nice as the DL380P. They don't fit in there as well either. And it kind of pinched my finger a little bit. Ow. Okay. Um, this is a large form factor drive bay again too. I just like large form factor HP servers. I mean, large form factor three and a half inch drives are cheaper than two and a half inch drives. They have larger capacities. And I already have quite a few large form factor caddies. So why get a new thing when you already have something that works? This actually, I f found out that this server came configured exactly like this out of the factory. I'm pretty sure of that um, the first thing, first hint, was all the HP memory. Second hint was in the first video I talked about how they have the CPUs when the factory, HP factory, configures these servers. They put the CPUs in little plastic caddies that slide into the socket, and they're spring-loaded, so when you unhook the socket, um, the CPU will just pop out of the socket. It's kind of like, a, I think, Threadripper CPUs. 
modern Threadripper CPUs have a similar thing, but this was only for HP servers. They're the only servers that I see having that. Um, but this had that, so I think that that means that these CPUs were original to the server. And the final thing is, there's a sticker on the side here of the heat sinks that has the exact model of CPU and the part number for that CPU on, written on it. So I think that this was configured exactly like this out of the factory. And the three terabyte hard drives came in caddies that were labeled three terabyte SATA, seven and a half thousand RPM. It looks very official, so I'm pretty sure this was pulled right out of some sort of production environment, and I bought it. In terms of my additions, <clears throat> or really downgrades because of my plan for it, which I'll get to in a minute, I took out the three terabyte hard drives. I didn't need the storage. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute, but just for a virtual machine host, generally you don't need a ton of storage on board depending on what you're doing. I just put a couple 250 gig hard drives that I had laying around in there, and that has worked fine. I don't need the, the 10 terabytes or whatever of ROS capacity that there would be in this if I had the 3 terabyte drives in there. Um, the other addition was the Oracle warp drive in there. Um, those things, sorry, those are awesome, and to avoid taking it out, I have a second one. Um, these have gotten, gotten up in price exponentially. Uh, when I bought these, these were about $60 each. Now they're like 120 because some YouTuber, who we all know, made a video about them. Not Linus Tech Tips, Craft Computing. Um, he made a video about these, and now they've gone up in price. But they are really cool. Um, and th what they are is they're a PCI Express SSD. Um, it's just an LSI HBA card with a couple um, SAS SSDs glued to it. And they're each, these, the F80 stands for 800 gigabytes. It's an 800 gigabyte SSD. It's a bit faster than SATA speeds for 60 bucks. It's a great deal. Or was a great deal. I think it still is a great deal. Um, but these are, uh, they're pretty fast. And it's just four uh, 200 gigabyte SSDs. And um, this card is flashed as an HBA, not a RAID controller. So they just get passed through to the operating system. And uh, I'm running Proxmox on all of my servers. And so this is pretty good for me because it means that I can make a Z ZFS array with these and get 800 gigabytes or rather since I only have one in this system what I'm instead doing is making a like a RAID 10 pretty much so I can have the it, it, I do lose half the storage so I've only got 400 gigabytes of SSD storage in this server however I do get added redundancy now, I don't think you can really replace these SSDs but if one of these the drives on here does fail which is much more likely than the actual HBA failing I can have enough time to back up all the machines or whatever that's on this card and swap out it with swap it out with a new one, then restore everything back. So yeah, they're pretty neat. Um, they actually do. They're super durable too, so it's probably not going to ever fail. But you know, better to be safe than sorry. So I would recommend always using some sort of RAID and backing up your data because RAID is not a backup. So yeah, it's got the basic quad network card. 460 watt power supplies this PCI Express thing module <laughs> that's the word um, almost identical to the ones in the DL380P well not really almost identical but the, you can see the design choices here are very similar it's just in a 1U form factor you get a 16x slot and an 8x slot that's what I have my warp drive in and another note about these warp drives is that they have um, they only come with half height PCI brackets However, um, these are actually just LSI cards, and so any LSI SAS bracket will fit on these. And so if you need a full height bracket, a regular LSI SAS bracket, I can actually grab one to show you, will fit on this card perfectly. Here's an LSI SAS bracket. It says 6 gigabit per second on it. SAS. You probably, if you worked with servers before, you probably recognize this, because these are very, very, very common. You can buy them in all sorts of different places on eBay, and, um, yep, they fit perfectly on those warp drive cards. So if you need a full height bracket for a warp drive, 
get one of these. Final thing is I'm just gonna quickly point out um, this server came probably because of how much storage it came configured with. Also came with a two gigabyte cache module. This is your cache module. Um, and here's one that's wrapped up. They are little dims and this one is a two gigabyte that I pulled out of the server. Um, it's a P420i two gigabyte cache module. And these, they come in 512 megabyte, um, one gigabyte and two gigabyte, I think. I've only seen the 512 and the two gigabyte. But that's what you get. And I just swapped, I thought I could probably use that two gigabyte cache module on a different server that has more storage on it. This one only has two 250 gigabyte hard drives, so I just put a 512 I had laying around in there. And yeah, the final thing, this memory. Um, it's pretty nice memory. These are eight gigabyte dims. Let's focus. There we go. HP smart memory. So it makes the server happier when this is in here. Less complaining in ILO. Um, and I guess the final thing before I turn it on is just in case you're watching this video and you do come across one of these servers and it happens to have a password protected BIOS where you can't even like boot the server without entering a password and you don't know what the password is, don't worry. I, this server had the same thing and I got around it. Um, it's actually kind of frighteningly easy considering this is enterprise equipment, but right under, right here, there are some dip switches and you'll see these labeled like, I don't know how many there are, there's like 10? Something like that. Anyway, switch number two, um, if you have the server off, you turn on switch number two, turn the server back on, turn it off again, then turn switch number two off again, that will reset the configuration. You will have to re-enter the date and time and stuff again, but it will completely clear the password and you have full control over the server. That's a quick little tip there. And now let's turn this thing on because I think you'll be very surprised by how quiet it is. <laughs> okay, I think the server's gonna come on in a second now. Uh, HP has a remarkable ability to make insanely quiet 1U servers. There it goes. It's not very quiet at first because it's posting and doing thermal calibration so it runs the fans at 100%. But when it's just like sitting there doing small tasks, it's very quiet. It is an extremely quiet server. And <clears throat> it's way quieter than my DL380. So if volume or noise decibels loudness is an issue for you when you when you want to buy a server, maybe get a 1U DL360 because the DL380s are way louder. And you do get less expansion with the 1U server, but the volume is way less. And once this is booted, done posting and everything, I'll bring the microphone up close and you'll be able to hear the, how quiet it is. I'm running Proxmox on this, and my plan for this server is kind of a big project that we're going to see coming up on this channel in the future. Um, I want to make a Proxmox high availability cluster. It's going to be expensive, I'm not going to deny it, <clears throat> because I'm going to need three of these servers. I have one right now, but I need two more, and they all need to be configured identically. So that means three warp drives, lots of memory, that's going to be the big killer, three sets of rails, that's the second biggest killer, Believe it or not, those are the two most expensive things. The servers are the one of the cheapest parts, <laughs> just the bare-bones servers. Um, but this, is, this project's going to take a while. But in the meantime, I thought we could just take a look at this server because you seem to like it when I just take a casual look at a server. Um, so we're posting over here. Yeah, there's the two. They're 1.8 gigahertz E5-2648L version 0 CPUs. Um, I updated the ILO firmware and I updated the BIOS and everything. I should probably make a video on updating the BIOS for these HP servers because it can be a little screwy, but it's definitely doable, just not in the way you'd initially think. Um, and that's not today. So there's the warp drive initially, initializing too. You'll see that it's just a um, HBA and you'll see there are 200 gigabyte, four 200 gigabyte drives that show up there and those are all super fast SSDs. And now it's gonna beep at me, yep, and boot into Proxmox, because that's what I'm running on this. But yeah, my goal with the high availability cluster is um, really just to get some redundancy for a lot of the services I run, 
Um, main thing is web servers. So I, I have, I'm actually running quite a few websites for friends and family and meet myself. <laughs> so I would like to get as much redundancy as I can. Uh, the other thing is that I, my DL380P server that pretty much runs everything, or is right now running everything, it is pretty much at capacity for running services, so I want some extra expandability there. And I guess like kind of the main reason is kind of a dream. I really, really want to replace, instead of just having one disk shelf and my storage server, I want a fiber channel SAN. And at the end of all of this, I hope I have the weirdest home lab that you've ever seen because it has a SAN array in it. And, I mean, this is... <laughs> I don't know where why I'm doing this because I don't have enough money for this. And it's going to take a while because I need to save up the money. But it's going to happen. I've bought one server already, so... We're in this. So it's all booted now into Proxmox. It's not that loud. There you are. Uh, so that's pretty much all I have for you today. I mean, it's just a quick little look at another server. Uh, very similar to the DL3AP. I highly recommend this one too. It's, I haven't used it as much as the DL3AP, but it seems very promising. Especially considering that it um, is so much quieter than the DL380P. Um, and I mean, yeah, it's just a great little low power server. I haven't seen it draw more than 100 watts with this configuration right here. Um, so yeah, uh, as always, go check out my uh, Minecraft server. I will put link to website here. And also check out my website. I will also put that link here. And um, I think that's pretty much everything I have. So thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe, I guess. If you didn't like it, you can dislike it too. I mean, I don't, I don't care. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. So see you next time.